Welcome to our solar electric trailer journey. We are here with our neighbors and friends, Jay and Hilda Meyer. We want to talk a little bit with them about how they RV as a senior couple. We are all getting there and they're already doing it. So we want to see how they make it work for them. May I ask you a very pointed question if you don't have to answer if you don't want to, but may we ask your ages? I'm 76. Okay. I'm 81. Okay, so see, we and we will all get there sooner or later. So it's interesting to talk to you guys now so that we can be prepared. When did you start RVing? We initially started um, back in the late 70s when our children were very young. We only did that for a few years. So that was the beginning, and then it kind of like disappeared from our lives. And we talked about it on and off fairly infrequently until a couple of years ago when we realized that a we're getting older b maneuverability was starting to slow down a little bit and c most important is we pretty much haven't seen anything and this is a big country that yeah. god gave us yeah. we uh, ended up at a small show at the tanger mall in daytona and a dealer was there selling this rig we told them what we were looking for and as soon as we saw this rig it was the showstopper that day because it's different than most primarily because of all the storage and um, within a very very short period of time we became the owners of it the very first place we went was a, a campground up in Brunswick we wanted to see what it was like. We didn't want to go far. Uh, maybe it was Pecan Park near the airport. I don't know. But this was all a build up to go out west. Okay. And we went to Texas. We had to go to Waco so she could have a cookie at Joanna Gaines okay. Bakery. Yeah. At the, at the Magnolia <laughs> yeah. Bakery. Oh, you just yeah. can't go to Texas for a second. Yeah. Then we journeyed up into New Mexico, Colorado, and the ultimate destination were the five national parks in Utah. Okay. If you really want to see what God made, go there, Maybe. but you know that because you're from there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you were gone six weeks on that trip? Yeah, a total of six weeks. Is that the farthest you've ever gone on a trip? Uh, yeah, yeah, in, in yeah. one shot. And then we came back for three weeks and went three weeks up north to New England. Oh, okay, so you came so back, the farthest cleaned up, rested, and went out again. Exactly. Yeah. How we far did the laundry, is that? We refilled the refrigerator and, and headed. So when you go out, how long do you like to stay in one place? Um, depends really where we are. Mm -hmm. If you don't like the campground, you're going to stay there for the minimum amount of time that mm -hmm. you agree to with the campground. Mm -hmm. um, I have a favorite campground. She likes it also, but we're, maybe, I think now maybe we're looking for a little bit of variety. I have a favorite campground up in Brunswick. I'm, I'm tired of uh, the dirt on the campground. Okay. I'm, I'm tired of um, the really roughing it mm -hmm. and much prefer concrete pads, okay. concrete patios, concrete roads, and people more our age. Okay. Right? We stayed at a lot of KOAs and they were wonderful. Every one of them was a wonderful campground. And the one thing about campers, they're the friendliest people in the world. Mm -hmm. They can be your next door neighbors and be rotten. Put them on a, yeah. in a campground and they're like totally different people. They and very and trustworthy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you can leave your doors unlocked and walk away. Okay. Um, we have done that with our dogs in here. And they're, our, you know, our, pie, our, our life. Yeah. And we have walked away and um, gone to a meeting or something. Uh, our favorite campground lately is recreation plantation in lady lake florida okay and it takes us about three hours to drive there it shouldn't, but it does okay yeah, yeah. um so they must but, have the concrete pads that you like and... no no, oh, no they not for all campus okay. just a few campus have concrete pads but how many campsites are there it's about 1100 
A lot of oh, that's them are, a big class. It's, yes. it's an over 55 community. Okay. A lot of them are permanent park models. A lot of them, they have day, week, month. Mm, okay. Then they have um, six and six, which means you, you contract to stay for six months. Mm -hmm. You can come and go a million times. They don't care. But at the end of the 180th day, for tax reasons, unless you want to be a resident, you need to go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Go wherever you want. They don't care, but come, be sure to care. And that space is yours. Yeah. They don't give yeah. that space away or rent it out unless they, you, they get your prior permission. We like that place in particular, even though not every pad is concrete. All right. And I just said I don't like the dirt. So what you do is you put a big mat out. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And the idea of staying for a long period of time makes it much easier because as you're getting older, mm -hmm. Doing all this work is very, very exerting. And we just as soon lay the mat out, get all the stuff out of the cargo. The cargo outside holds a lot of stuff. And we're constantly carrying things in and out, water, the toolbox, whatever it may be. And the older you get, the harder that becomes, as I said. So spending more time at, at a place Especially when you like the people, because that's really what mm -hmm. made it. Mm -hmm. uh, the people are all wonderful. They go for the people that we hung around with. with they're all there for one yeah. month, two months, three months. We were the short timers this year. We were there for the first time for a month. Uh, people from Canada, um, upstate New York, New York yeah. they're just absolutely wonderful. So if there's dirt on the ground, I don't care there. Yeah. And the thing is, a place like that, and there are a lot of these places around, um, they have activities that are geared to people 55 and over. Sure. And she, very likes, she likes going to the meetings, whatever day of the week it is, because, you know, they give you a free donut, some coffee, and you get to meet a lot of nice people. And, and, you, and you, there's a farmer's market afterwards where the farmers come in and set up their products. Okay. So I can get vegetables um, yeah. with big vegetable eaters, and I like that real well. Uh, I like all the variety of um, uh, games that they have. I played um, uh, bridge, uh, and I'm I'm going to be able to play canasta this time. Okay. Um, so all the activities are geared yeah, to yes. older people, right. yes. which is really nice. There's activities nice. morning, noon, and night, seven okay. days a week because of the size. So of the... you can participate or, or not. Exactly. You know, yes. Exactly. When you yes. get tired, you can go back and sleep or whatever. Many, yeah. many, many of the features are free. And many, you know, like if they're bringing in live entertainment, you may have to pay a few bucks. Yeah, sure. And also in that part of the country, which is why there's so many people our age in particular, going to that part of the country being Central Florida, mm -hmm. part of the setup, it was something brand new to us when when we were there in February. Um, we purchased the screen, we put the canopy out. Mm -hmm. Okay, but in the, in, at any time during the day, if the side of the rig where the canopy is, is east, canopy or no canopy, the sun penetrates. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we saw people that had screens, the custom made screens. Lo and behold, the place that makes them is like 30 minutes away. And you call the guy, you tell him what your dimensions are, and you pick a color, you pick a style of screen, and you go two, three, four hours later, and you pick it up. He's oh, made wow. It. It's fast. So it goes from one end of the awning to the other. It slides in a groove in the awning. Old people need to know these things as to whether they're older people. Did I say old? <laughs> older. Older. More yeah. experienced than life, children. people. <laughs> yeah, and... You just slide it along a rail, That's easy. and you stake it into the ground, and you had magnificent shade from the sun. Okay. And that allows you rain or shine between the canopy yeah. and the screen. We had our picnic table outside. out there. I was going to say, you so could we can, eat out there yeah. and socialize but, with friends and yeah. people out right. there. We like to cook outside. Okay. So we don't have a grill. Uh -huh. What we did was we bought a, a griddle. A cast iron oh, okay. griddle, blackstone griddle. It's always, again, you deal with weight factors as you're getting older. These things weigh a few pounds and hauling them in and out of your cargo area. Mm -hmm. So you want to do mm -hmm. it as few times as possible, right? Yep. So you try and take it out once when you get there, 
stay there a long time, two mm -hmm. months is, is good, Sounds rather good. than two or three days. Mm -hmm. And just leave your stuff out. Nobody's yeah. going to take it. It's wonderful. That's it's wonderful. nice. That's so nice. Yeah. Now that you go out, Cam, now you're going there for two months. Yes. How, often, how far do you normally go? How far will you go driving to get to a camp, camping site that you like? Right now, I would like to stay within about 100, 150 okay. miles. Okay. And living here in Mandarin, Florida, mm -hmm. when you go south and you go west, there's a lot of campgrounds. Yeah, there is here. And Central Florida, yeah. you, can, you know, you could go to a different campground every week yeah. for a solid year and you wouldn't be covering it all. And that's how you get to pick and choose the ones you like and don't like. Okay, yeah, you, you would learn by experience, too. Yeah. Pick what you like. Now that we've got the big trip to Utah and New England out of the way, um, I'm, I'm ready to go to fewer places and spend longer time. Because in all honesty, sure. for me personally, and I think you can appreciate having come from that part of the country, when we went to Bryce Canyon and I saw Inspiration Point, to me, after that, it's, it's really not much. Yeah. <laughs> There's not it's much that I want to go. I yeah, could come, could come home to it the is, speed bumps in Florida. It is beautiful. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So that's why yeah. I'm content. You know, driving through the flatlands of New Mexico and everything. But when you get into Colorado and then in Utah and we went to the Grand Canyon, very beautiful. All those mountains, all those hills, all those rocks, mm -hmm. all those formations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's one place that always gets you right here, right? And for me, that, that was Bryce Canyon. Okay. Um, yeah, we love it. So too. now I'm ready to... You're ready to stay close. Stay closer. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Now, you you drive the RV, but you tow your car behind. How do you get the tow dolly on? Uh, the tow dolly is on a hitch. It's a ball hitch. And the tow dolly... Um, itself weighs 600 pounds and has about a 3,500, 4,000 pound tow capacity. So the first thing we do, of course, is we hitch the tow dolly to the hitch on the back of the camper. And then we secure it with chains, locks, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. lights for the tow dolly. The tow dolly has all the lighting requirement that you need, brake lights and turn signals. We do not have to have separate lighting okay. for the vehicle. Um, some that are running four on the four on the ground do that. But we are not required by okay. to do that. Because so the we, front wheels are up on the oh, tow dolly. Yeah, the front yeah, wheels okay. are up on the tow dolly because both of our cars, well, my car is too big for the tow dolly, but her car... Um, the manual is very, very clear. You cannot tow with the four wheels on the ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you put it up on the tow dolly, and when she helps me by guiding me, mm -hmm. because you drive it up two ramps, mm -hmm. right? you want to make sure the tires are in the middle of those ramps mm -hmm. as best that you can get them. Mm -hmm. And then you have special straps yeah. and special um, latches. And you, you learn through experience and trial and error how to tie these things down and have your car still there when you get to your destination. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you've learned through experience how to make that work perfectly. <laughs> yeah, and talking no, to other campers. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> At first, I used to have to, at the campgrounds, I'd have to ask people for help. I yeah. don't remember how to do this, you know, so. Yeah, no yeah. Problem. Jay, how do you move a 600 pound tow dolly around? Okay, on flat concrete, it's not too, too bad because just, it's on two rubber tires that has 60, 65 pounds pressure. And um, that's pretty good once you get a momentum. But if you're going up a little incline or if you are on dirt, it becomes significantly more difficult, especially in my age group. So somebody said, why don't you just get a tow trailer? Okay, what's a tow trailer? It's a simple device that got a hitch and connected on a rail and it's got two tires and you put the the tow dolly on the hitch and it's got a handle and the handle goes mm. like this this okay. just worked out beautifully and you guys 
yeah, we see you with it on your trailer every time you go out. And yeah, there's having, your car following we, you. And, we didn't get it at first. Got we it. got it last, we had it a year ago, August. Oh, okay. We had it exactly 48 hours. We were at a truck stop, leaving the truck stop in Ocala. And the trucker behind us did not see the trailer. And he drove his truck up over oh. the trailer. No. <laughs> we had it, we got it at two o'clock on a Friday and it was totaled at noon on Sunday. <laughs> so, oh my goodness. <laughs> so we managed to get it home and on oh. Monday we had to buy a new one. <laughs> so, oh. uh, it's funny how things work out. Those... Mm -hmm. yeah. Stuff stuff happens, doesn't <laughs> yeah. it? Just stuff happens. Yeah. yeah, it's quite an experience. So is there anything else? You've shared an awful lot of how you do things now, now that you're a more mature adult than when you were 20 and doing this. Yeah. Anything else you want to share with those of us that are older? Yeah, um, when you're driving something like this, whether it's a Class C or travel trailer or a big Class A, you develop a whole new sense of defensive driving, especially with something this size, because this is 14,000 pounds when, it, when it's all filled up and everything else. It takes a while to stop these things. You're not gonna stop on a dime like you do with an automobile. And you have to be aware all the time of the limitations of the width and mm -hmm. the turning radiuses you know, you take that corner too sharp, you'll take down the side of your vehicle, or that side of the vehicle, and whatever's on the corner. So, and since our reflectors are not as sharp as they were even 10 years ago, this has to constantly be, you know, become paranoid about it. You just adapt differently to, as opposed to driving an automobile. And you'll get to your destination because there's thousands of us out there. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it's really, on a motorcycle, yeah. you wave to each other, and these things you don't. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. Hilda, anything you want to share with people? Um, it was harder for me to get in and out um, of this motorhome, but it's not impossible for me. But we take the dogs out four times a day. And then we have our own recreation. So it's in and out quite often. And if you're cooking outside, you learn to stay one outside and one inside so you can pass things. Oh, okay. That would help a lot. Yeah. The, so you don't have to go out as much. That very point, the steps on almost all motorhomes, mm -hmm. for some reason, the steps are high. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that's a, that's a consideration that senior citizens need to remember. If you have climbing issues, mm -hmm. you better pay attention to the steps before you invest in one of these things, uh, because it may not, it may turn out not to be to your liking if you have yeah. knee problems or just yeah. overall problems that those steps are going to be a problem. Make sure you check that out before you yeah. buy. Yeah, and that, this that's one, very important. This one has uh, the handrail, so mm -hmm. there's two of them, one on each side. So you can grab really a helps. hold of it and pull you thing. up. That's good. Yes, yeah, that's what right I liked that's about uh, the stairs. And in our case, we have we have one dog, as you know, um, the, the Cavalier, who doesn't have all those physical capabilities anymore. Yeah. So I have to pick him up off the couch. Okay. I have to pick him up to get him down. This is I have to pick him up to get him back into the, into the coach. These things four times a day, seven days a week. <laughs> you know, plus everything else. Wonderful. I would do yeah. it three months. But you have to realize what your limitations are. Yeah. Yep. And you have to realize they don't have very good gas mileage either. Yeah, there is. There is. Yeah. That is so true. Not like so solar. True. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you so much for joining us today. If you have any questions whatsoever, about Arvine as a senior, please leave comments and we will ask Jay and Hilda before we answer any of those for you so we get it correct. Thank you for joining us today. Bye. Thank you. When we heard our rigging wouldn't be delivered until Christmas of 2023, we decided to see what we could tow with our Chevy Bolt, launching our solar electric trailer journey. We have a lot to learn and we're sharing what we discover along the way. We've added solar panels to our A-Liner Scout pop-up trailer preparing us for doing the same on a bigger trailer when the Rivian arrives. Join us by subscribing now.